Welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. As always, this is Kondrick, and I've got something really cool to show you. Uh, now, I have already done a tutorial for an XOR gate, which is this design right here, which, as you can see, is one switch on, things work. Second switch on, things stop. First switch off, second switch on, things are working again, and of course, both off, things stop. But... I was watching another video by Suzumavoid recently where I noticed something interesting he did with the OR gate he was using, and that is the Star Wars door uh, tutorial that he did. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description. Go check it out. It's really cool. But I came up with this design, which is even more compact. You can actually fit it into essentially a 3x3 three three area. Uh, minus one block in the corner right here. As you can see, um, you know, if you move this controller elsewhere, you only need to take up this area plus this one corner block. So let me show you how this uh, how this is built. And uh, yeah, so everything marked with stone is optional. We've got these switches are optional. This is just as an example. Uh, this controller can be m located elsewhere. You don't even need a controller, technically. You can uh, you can just have the sensor that I'll be installing in a second controlling something else entirely. And this is just to, this uh, this uh, thing right here is just to demonstrate. So let's go ahead and get this all set up. So you've got this one block here that you have to have because you need to be able to mount a bearing on it. And you put another bearing here. And what we'll do is we will add a, a block against this first bearing and a block against the second bearing. And now those first two blocks we will attach controllers to. Right? Like, let's see here. There we go. And there we go. So this is most, this is almost the entire design. Now all we need to do is place a sensor like that. And as you can see, it takes uh, essentially a 3x3 three three area plus the bearing in that corner. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll hook up these switches to each of these controllers. And then each controller will be attached to the bearing that it is connected to already. And then attached to the bearing that is across from it on the other side or farthest from it on the other side. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in my previous tutorial is you need to make sure that the bearings are rotating in the right direction. You can see the red and blue arrows on this side. The blue arrow is rotating in a way that will make the controller and the block behind it lift up from the center. You want to make sure you go ahead and reverse whichever bearings are not pointed in the right direction. And then that's essentially it. You know, connect from the sensor to whatever you're controlling. It does not necessarily have to be this controller in the back. It could be a controller elsewhere. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this controller to a plus 15 on a loop. And now that the sensor is activated because of these controllers dropping in front of it, that's going to start rotating. Now we're going to do the same thing we did in my previous tutorial, which is set each sensor to a rotation of... Oh, not there. We're going to set it to a default rotation of plus 30, uh, secondary rotation of minus 15 on bearing number 1, and bearing number 2 to a positive rotation of 30. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other uh, controller, which is plus 30 on bearing 1, uh, minus 15 on stage 1 of bearing 1, and then plus 30 on stage 1 of bearing 2. And if we go like that, you will see that the, um, you will see that the, uh, whoops, let me go ahead and put a block right there. That's not necessary to the design, depending on where you locate it, but just so I don't keep walking in front of it, you'll see both of the controllers are rotated up. And now if I flip one of these switches, the, uh, this controller raises up and that controller lowers down. But if I flip the other switch, both controllers are now raised up so that the sensor can't see them. And then, of course, if I turn off the first switch again, then the second controller lowers down. And if I turn off the second switch, 
both bar- uh, both controllers end up back in the default resting state. So that's essentially it. That's that's the whole thing. Um, I don't think there's more to explain. In fact, if you want to have a better explanation of what exactly this is, check out the link to my previous tutorial. The link will be in the description. And as always, this is Cotton Drick. And if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe. I have a lot more tutorials coming up soon for ideas I've got, other logic gates, and some, some things I've built in my test world. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time, and have a great day.